We are now in planning mode for Portugal. Yay! So we are planning to be in Portugal this winter. Yes, we are. First time in three years. We're, we're hoping to be there. We're in planning mode and we just really want to share with you how we plan our winter getaways. Portugal for two months. So how do you get to Portugal from here? It's two ways. Yes. We can take TAP, which is Air Portugal, and they always fly into Lisbon. Uh, but they're an innovative airline and they've always allowed you to have a layover included in the ticket. So when you book it, if you want to book uh, Toronto or Boston to Faro, then what will happen is they will fly you into Lisbon. At the time of booking it, you can say, give me a two or three day layover, and then they'll put you on the Lisbon Faro flight in two or three days time. The other option is a Canadian carrier. Absolutely. The other option is to go with Air Transit, which we can fly direct from Toronto to Faro. And there are a lot of added advantages of that. The fact that you get on here in the evening, you get off there early in the morning, and you are already in the Algarve. There and is one disadvantage, Rotina. Oh, what's that, Norm? They don't fly all the time. It's seasonal. Oh, yeah, that's true. So when yeah. we first started going to Portugal, yeah. they didn't fly there until about the first week of March. Yeah. Since then, they yeah. have they brought have in January that. flights. Yeah, but I'm not even, I'm not sure if it, when we went with them a couple of years ago, I think it had to be sort of the first two to three weeks in January. Like you couldn't go the beginning of January, no. they went later. So, yes, they have put on a lot more additional flights than when we originally used them. And they're both, yeah. both very similar in price. Yeah. The other advantage, if, yeah, if you want to do a different way, because we would fly TAP and just go direct to Faro. So there'd be a four-hour layover in Lisbon. It's a long time. Yeah. So... One thing we researched is that we could just buy a ticket to Toronto to Lisbon, then get the bus from Lisbon Airport into the center of Lisbon and go to the bus station and get the bus to the Algarve, which is quicker than the train. So you're looking mm -hmm. about two and a half hours yeah. to get the bus. It's fairly reasonable. It's, you can get a ticket anywhere between 25 to 45 euros each. Which but, is pretty economical, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, the only um, downside is you'd have to bring the bus back to Lisbon to get your flight To home. get your flight home. That does mean that it opens up different ways of getting there. Absolutely, doesn't and it? And we have had some yeah. great times in Lisbon. Yeah. We went out to Cascai, um, yeah. which is like a holiday uh, resort area going towards the coast. We, we, we had some really nice times there as well. So there's lots of things you can do for your snowbird uh, trip to Portugal. Lots of options. Obviously, Lisbon at that time of year, January, February, March, isn't going to be as warm. There's the Algarve. As the is Algarve. It? No. But if you just stay in two or three days, yeah. it's great to have a city break and to see something a little bit uh, different. We, we've certainly been to Lisbon a couple of times and enjoyed our visits, haven't we? We have, and we used to like getting that, uh, that mm. drink. Oh, and now I can't even remember how you pronounce it, the no. one with the cherries in it. Yeah, but, um. uh, but anyway, <laughs> lots to experience there. Jane, <laughs> how do we find uh, accommodation in the Algarve? Well, you know, it's like everything, Google is our friend anything we want to see which town to go to which hotel where apartments are just sort of start off with a simple google a month in the algarve where to stay and they all come up there but that's our starting point then we will use lots of others like expedia tripadvisor um booking.com yeah vrbo airbnb we'll put in the dates that we want to be there and see what sort of things come up, what sort of costs there are. 
and kind of work from there. Sometimes we will actually try and find the accommodation first and then book the flights yeah. as opposed to booking a return flight and then scrambling to find the accommodation. Because the accommodation yeah. can be difficult. So yeah. if you go down the route of uh, VRBO or Airbnb, what we found is that they're now starting to charge electricity on top of the rental. Yes. And also the cleaning fees, the admin fees, the booking fees are off the charts. And, and it's, it's, it's made it so expensive. But what we did find the last time we were in the Algarve is a lot of the Algarve hotels do have apartments in them. So they will sell you a hotel room or a studio that has a kitchen in it or a one bedroom or two bedroom apartment. We did that mm -hmm. um, on our last trip and we had a one bedroom in a hotel and the advantage for us was it was a known brand hotel yeah and we only had to pay when we got there yeah we really enjoyed that didn't we, we? Did. i think we maybe had to send them i'm going to say like a couple of hundred dollars that it was, was a it. very small token amount but everything else was billed the day we arrived at the hotel yeah that was really unusual with nearly everybody else you have to be paying in full I'm going to say probably 60 or 90 days before you arrive. Well, just recently um, we've been yeah. doing some searches um, for a couple of different hotels that still have the mm -hmm. apartments. Yeah. And their best price we have to pay now. For, like for now, for January year. and February, which... We're not going to do that. Yeah, no. No, we, we like to hold on to our money. <laughs> get some interest and yeah. get some dividend income from. But we do like the idea of the security of an apartment within a hotel, especially if it's a big hotel chain group. Mm -hmm. It does give you that extra security that, yes, you have your own apartment, but you are within the walls of a hotel from point of view of cleaning, restaurants, um, anything else, swimming pools that they might have to offer to make things more enjoyable for your stay. It's very yeah. much peace of mind yeah. booking that way rather than going with a private owner of an Airbnb. Because mm -hmm. the very first time we went to Portugal, they cancelled on us uh, about a week or two before we got there. Um, so we had a big, big discussion with Airbnb. Luckily, they, they did come up with a super host and Airbnb paid the balance because it was a more expensive stay. Anyway, mm -hmm. what you really need to find out is, do you have good mobility or do you not? Because there are a number of Algarve towns that are hilly. Yes. Albufeira can be hilly. Yeah. In the new town, it's not hilly. But if you want to go to the old town, it's hilly. Yeah. Even though there's an escalator that takes you down there. There are other towns that are just built on a hill. Yeah. And there are others where they're really what we would call flat. They have like a big promenade. Right. So much, um, for example, Armaco de Pera is a wonderful one of She's, that one. She said that wrong. Well, I'm going to call it Armaco de Pera uh -oh. or Quatira. Um, and I love that place too. She's just digging the hole deeper. I'm, <laughs> so, I'm, not, I'm not saying any of the names. So anybody who wants to attack me because of I don't know how to say it, at least we are trying. And you know what? It, there are so many wonderful places there, aren't there? There are. So the um, number one yeah. reason we go there is it's affordable. January, February, March in the Algarve, we're kind of looking around 2,000 euros, which are very similar to dollars. Yeah. So it's half price. Throw on an airfare and... It's still more reasonable. As Norm said, even though we have our air flight on top with the accommodation, you're still way ahead of the game, aren't you? But the other thing, Tina, yeah. is that eating out in, right? in good restaurants, mm -hmm. interesting cuisine is cheaper. Yeah. Going to the grocery store and buying your own stuff, bringing it back and cooking is cheaper. Mm -hmm. um, so Plus, you get that European vibe as well. Mm -hmm. um, Portugal 
it's absolutely fantastic because they grow so much of their own fruits and vegetables. When you go in the store, you have a little flag on it saying grown in Portugal or next door in Spain. Mm -hmm. So the food is excellent quality. You can still buy a really good bottle of wine for two euros. That's amazing, isn't it? And, an, and another big find of ours, too, is if you want to go and eat a meal in the grocery stores or supermarkets, yeah. if you can go to Pingo Dochi, you can get a fabulous meal and you can get carafes of wine there. Oh, yeah. And unbelievable prices. Um, and also just, take out pizza as well. Yeah, we've done that too, haven't we? We've been beautiful. and ordered our own custom pizza and taken it back to the hotel. So depending on where you yeah. stay, do you need a rental car or do you not need a rental car? Mm. So this is our take. We take a rental car yeah. because we do stock photography and stock video and we like to get around the Algarve. That's why we stay in Albufeira because it's a geographical center mm -hmm. of the Algarve. Most of all the other towns are self-contained and yeah. you don't need a car. No. If, if you're not doing what we're doing, you really don't need a car. The one thing you can do is you can book tours. Yeah. And they have these little shops yeah. Yeah. in every town yeah. selling tours on behalf of tour companies. So you can get a bus tour to take you up to the tall mountain. Yeah. You can go to... You, uh, can, Gibraltar. you can go to Gibraltar. We keep looking at this. We actually haven't done it yet, but I think perhaps maybe this time we should do Gibraltar, Norm. Yeah. That would be quite nice. It's a long trip, though. It is. It's, it's a, a long it's day a, out. It's a day trip. So you, you maybe leave at six in the morning and you get back at midnight. Yeah, that's usually beyond our sort of capacity of day trips. And, and don't, <laughs> don't forget the coffee culture over yeah. there as well. They have some absolutely amazing coffee shops, cafes. Even the train station has a cafe oh. that, that would put yeah. everywhere to shame. They do wonderful coffees, don't and, they? And pastries. <gasps> oh, you, and you just have favorites. to yeah. just have to eat those as well. <laughs> so and and be open to small mom and pop restaurants where they do a dish of the day. Yeah. Be Portuguese. Be adventurous. We've never been disappointed. And a lot of those dish of the days at those restaurants are at lunchtime. When I say yes. lunchtime. They'll maybe be going from about 11 o'clock to 3 o'clock. So you might need to change the way you want to eat, have your big main dinner midday, and then just have a snack or something later in the day. Yeah. And the other thing, rock formations along the coastline, oh. all the sandstone and eroded. There's, there's lots of nice walks that you yeah. can walk by the ocean on the cliff tops or on the beaches as well. Mm -hmm. And it's just... It's just so relaxing. And the number one thing that we really, really like when we go to Portugal, as opposed to anywhere else, is the blue skies. Oh, yeah, you wake up first thing in the morning, that blue sky. You've never seen a just shade of blue. Beautiful. The Portuguese, we call it our Portuguese blue sky. And no wonder just... they make blue and white tiles because the sky <laughs> must inspire them. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Hey. So we're in planning mode. Yeah. We're hoping to be there. If all goes well, fingers crossed. And it's a wonderful place to spend a month or two. Yeah. Culturally yeah. Uh, significant. Yeah. Lots to see, lots to do. And it's inexpensive. Maybe we'll see you in Portugal this winter. Yes, that would be really nice. And if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, we would really, really appreciate it. If you just press that subscribe button, it really helps us a lot. And it costs you nothing to do something that's so easy and so simple, but it really will help our channel. So we hope that everybody is keeping well. And staying safe. And until the next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.